Hey everybody, so uh, today we're going to look at a dynamo graph that groups text. The reason why I created this graph was because I've worked with CAD files many times and in and, and almost every firm that I've worked for, uh, I've touched CAD files at some point. And what a lot of folks ask for is to be able to recreate something from them, typically rooms, uh, which isn't too difficult. And one of the issues that you run into is when you recreate the rooms and place them in Revit is the text. If the file comes in all messy uh, and text is all exploded and messed up, it when you read that information in, uh, it messes up when you're trying to place your rooms. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that workflow, I've got a video talking about it. Um, so um, I just wanted to verify real quick so I paused and checked so I'll put the the YouTube video where I show how to create rooms from CAD files I'll put that below if you're interested but one of the things that you run into is when you have these CAD files is the text and if the text looks great, what you can do is pull it in and simply read it and then get the point from that text, which is going to give you the location to place your room. And then if the text is there, you can just read that in as your room name and room number. So if we grab this CAD file and query into it and grab this name here, you'll see that it's one item. It's not two separate lines. And then what we can do is when we grab that element with BIM morph nodes, we can find the location of it. That'll be our location for our room. And then we can also pull in the text, which would then come in as the room name uh, or number. And if the text is all messed up, when you try to group all that stuff together and you try to push all that data into the rooms after you place them, things can get pretty messy. And that's what I'm trying to do in my graph. And by the way, you can download my graph below. Uh, I've got a GitHub repo uh, link, and it should uh, you should find a, a link that directly takes you to this to the location of this graph. Feel free to download it and use it however way you want. And if you have any questions, definitely uh, reach out. So here, or actually, let me show you one other thing. So this is a good example of text. We're not going to try to mess around with this file, but if we go to this one and if I grab this and query into it, you'll see that the text is all messed up. And what we want is we want to be able to group these two items or these two texts together. And then we want the room number uh, grouped with it as well, but we want to be able to know that that's the room number. So when we place our rooms in the model, we'll place them uh, correctly and with the right information. So let's jump into Dynamo and kind of take a look at that workflow. So most of this is in Python or at least the grouping part and the packages I'm using is BIM morph nodes and I think that should be it. Yeah, so just BIM morph nodes and then the uh, Python node here. All right, so we get the instances and all that, the link instances. I won't talk too much about that, but down here, I've just got a code block indexing into it so I can show you the two different CAD files. So I'm gonna run this, and then we can see the output. You can see all the points, and so those are the points from the text. We can see for the most part, these points are separated, and and e from from what it looks like, easy to work with. And then over here, what we can do is if we look at this, we've got our CAD text data, and we can pull the origin point of that text, which is what all those points you see there. And these are the points that we would use uh, to place our rooms. And then here's our text. So if you're familiar with Dynamo, you know that we've got a two list here, and they match up correctly there's 53 in both of them and so that's easy we can just take that and plug it right into this room 
location and just go ahead and create those rooms and um, and then populate them with the the proper room name but if things get messy and actually I'll show you this Python graph so it goes in and groups it based off of distance and it's, it's actually a really simple graph but you can see here the nested list uh, it's just got the single point in there because none of them meet the distance between one another for them to be grouped together so they're all in their individual list if you go in here it's a pretty simple uh, script it's just reading in the points in the text and then we've got some uh, text groups and and point groups these are going to be the outputs so you see those down there so this will be the groups um, or a list of groups we've got a while loop here that just says when uh, pretty much run until you've looped through all the points and, and grouped them in their proper groups. So it'll continue on until it hits, until that point hits zero. And um, here we've got our, our point that's gonna start with, it's gonna pop it out so that then later down here we can actually loop through it. And then we've got our text too because most mostly what we're trying to do here is just take the points and just uh, figure out the distance the other part of it would be the text and all we're doing is applying to the text list the same exact thing that we're applying to the the points so here we've got a point group and it starts with that first uh, point that we just popped out same with the text down here we've got a temp index that's for this part down here uh, there actually may be a better way to write that. I'm sure there's a better way. Uh, let me know if you have any any input on that. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that when we get down there. But this here, we've got a just a, a for loop that's going through uh, four different lists. So we've got a, a range, and the range is just uh, the length of points. And the reason why we have a range is we're just looping through to get the index. So that all that's all that is. And I was trying to use the enumerate, but I didn't know how to do that while also using the, the zip uh, function or method. And so I just used a range to get to, to get the index value. And so range uh, index and then points uh, p2 and then text t2 and then so if p2 distance to p which is our first um, point in our in our sub list or the group if it's below three feet then uh, it'll it'll pin the the point to the group and then it'll do the same for the text and we have our text our temp index down here and so that'll just keep looping until it doesn't meet uh, that anymore. If it can't find any points that are less than than three feet, then it'll end by taking that point group and then appending it to the overall point groups list. Now since we've went through there and we were iterating through the points list I didn't want to try to remove or pop out points so if we here it says p2 dot distance uh, 2p is less than 3 if that is the case I didn't want to come down here and pop p2 out of the points list so I let the loop finish and then after the loop is done down here I use the index values that I captured and I remove the points and the text at that point point. and while I'm iterating through it since I am popping out an element from that list every time I iterate through it the index values do decrease so I just um, add um, uh, or I remove a, uh, a the index value, so I just negative one, essentially to the overall index value. 
So down here you can see I do x plus equals negative 1. And so that'll loop through and every time it pops it corrects for the element that's removed from the index and it corrects it by um, fixing the uh, fixing the index value there. So it'll loop through and then now we'll have uh, the list cleaned out will clean out the the points list of all the points we know that are group in the first group and then it'll start all over again and then it'll continue doing this until it's created all the groups and then we output the point groups and text groups also you know bear with me I'm trying to explain this um, and if it's confusing to you uh, definitely download this graph it's I mean it's 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 on the the repo when you download it it's yours at that point uh, use it however way you want and let me know if you have any questions or any issues with it or if it's uh, still confusing for you let me know and I can try to help uh, you can also join the discord uh, which is below that's the link uh, and then definitely ask questions on there as well uh, and then the community can can help you so that's it that's all it is and it runs pretty quick so if we're gonna close that and then jump into uh, the other text file or sorry the DWG and we'll run that this one's a bit more messy so it's gonna it's gonna have a longer runtime I actually think this isn't too bad though overall and let me replace that layer name run it again I think overall it's not too bad. I thought iterating, because this is like a brute force method of iterating through it. And there's some cool ways to actually uh, try to find the shortest distance between two points in a more optimized way rather than looping through every single list. The cool thing is, is when we loop through the list, we do pop out the elements uh, for each group, reducing the overall list that we're looping through. So I do think that's why it's uh, it's fast, or at least partially fast, but you definitely can improve this Python script. Uh, I, I ha I'll have to check, but it, it's like the divide and conquer problem, the point to other, or point to point distance issue. Uh, if I find the link, I'll put it below, but that could be something super interesting to, to test or see if it runs faster so keep that in mind if you're running this on large projects that this could slow down quite a bit but overall I think it's not too bad there's 553 points in here I think that's quite a bit and then you can see all the different uh, text values now if you're familiar with this workflow what we try to do is when the text like you saw before when it's 53 and 53 the text matched up with a single point and then what you could do is use that single point place the room well in this case the fact that the text is all over the place some of the text has two lines some of it has uh, three lines or even four in some cases we have a lot more extra points and it's hard to distinguish which ones are the rooms or which point to use for the uh, room from another room and then how do we group all this text together because you can see uh, family toilet and then we've got a room number and then lobby and then two room or three room numbers and then break so it's like how do we group this logically and this was what I kind of came up with I thought this you know would be uh, you know one of the best methods to try to group these things together though there are I think better ways or at least quicker ways to do it and so if you look here we have all of our points and they're all grouped together essentially so the three here you can set that to whatever uh, works for you or whatever file file you're working with uh, and it'll go in and find everything that's below three and group them together and so we've got this list here or this uh, single point in that list two points there 
There's uh, three there for on list 13. Close that. So um, single one, we've got two, and you can see it's pretty consistent. It's always got the number at the top. If we go to list 13, we can see that there's three with the number on top. And my thought after this was that the fact that it has, it could be zero, or it could be one or four items in that list, there may it may be worth having another Python graph or even within this Python graph a way to recognize that and then if this is a if these if these two values are text to merge them together and then if this is a number or if it has a uh, multiple numbers or whatever the room number convention is that's uh, in Python you could through some type of logic figure that out so in this case we could just say that if any of these values are a number then we want to pull that out because that'll be used to create a number so if it's not the first item and it's somewhere down here pull that out put it at the first or something and then group all the text together so there's a lot more things you can build to this to make it more intuitive and to catch all those uh, variables or like up here you can see that it just says waiting and so you can have in the Python script a way to loop through, look at waiting, and then go to, because it's only got one item in there and it's a string, it could default to some room number. Maybe it's the next number in the list of all numbers or something. Just some thoughts. If you use this, keep that in mind. Uh, there may be some things you need to add to it. And yeah, so this is it. And then from here, we just index in and grab the first index, and this will be our points. Down here, we'll grab our, our rooms. We do get the first index of each list so that we have a nice uh, list of points to place our rooms. Like I said before, this huge list doesn't tell you what rooms. You could be placing multiple points in the same uh, room uh, or like the where the room needs to be and you could be placing multiple you could be placing points or rooms uh, the wrong rooms when you go to a number and name them you could be numbering them wrong so there's all it just gets really messy so by doing this by grouping it over here we can get the item and index just start with the first one it doesn't really matter and then down here what we do because there's at least some logic to this it seems to be always the first uh, item or the uh, number is we can just grab index zero though it's not going to be a hundred percent but you can see mostly is and then just so I could quickly show this example I just went to index one uh, but that that wouldn't work if you wanted to include the full name. So surgery, a mission, and waiting. You'd have to group that text together. And you could do that in Python. Or what you could do is just grab uh, the first, uh, like remove the first index out of it. Have that separate as a, its own list. And then just group the rest of the text together. Or the rest of the items. Uh, in the list together as one string. So that could be a way, and you could do that easily with Dynamo, just its native nodes. So that's all I got. Uh, hopefully I didn't ramble on too much, uh, but definitely download this graph if it's something that you want to use. And let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.